Hey, welcome back to my shop, where I'm finally moving on from my fireplace chronicles and starting a new project. And it's about damn time. For those of you that watched my last video, you may remember those janky sideways bookshelves that I used as a temporary TV stand while I worked on the one that I have now? Now that I don't need the shelves for my TV anymore, I had to find some other use for them. I thought about donating them, but they're in such bad shape that I don't think anybody can really use them as is. Both of the shelves are extremely shaky, there's a lot of cracks and gaps in the wood, and everything just got really warped over time. But I think that if I strip the finish and even everything out, I'll be left with some pretty solid material that I can use to make chairs out of for my kitchen counter. So, instead of throwing these things out, I'm gonna salvage the material and see what I can build with them. So the first step is to take everything apart and see what I'm working with. Luckily, all the shells were secured together using wood screws, not glue, and that made them really easy to disassemble. I made sure to hold on to all the screws while taking everything apart because I plan on reusing them for the chairs. You already know my motto, the more material I can salvage, the better because that helps reduce waste, and it means I don't have to buy as many things. So it's really a win-win for everybody. I also made sure to remove the random nails that were in the wood, just because I don't want to accidentally run them through my blades and end up damaging something. And this is all the material that I have to work with, which is great because this should be more than enough for what I need. Now the next step is to fix all this warping and to strip the finish, and I can do that all in one go. I did this by running each piece through the planer, and then lowering the blade a bit, and then running everything through it again, and then repeating that process until all the sides were nice and even and the majority of the finish has been removed. I was really lucky that all the pieces were the same thickness, so I could just run all of them through first and then lower the blades, instead of having to adjust the height each time. You don't always get this lucky when you're working with scrap material, so I'll take my wins wherever I can get them. The planner did a great job taking off majority of the finish, so after that I did just some light sanding to smooth out the surfaces and to remove any lingering bits that needed to come off. At this point, I was still deciding on what kind of finish I want to use for the final product. I personally believe that painting over real wood is a sin, and that it should only be stained or finished with poly. But unfortunately, these pieces were so badly damaged that it was starting to look like I would have to paint over them in order to hide all the patchwork. Next, I used my trusty Durham Sputty again, and I went through and filled all of the damaged places that were left by the screws and nails. Since a lot of these holes go all the way through, I tried to really get the putty in there so that it can go through the center from both sides if possible. Alright, once I finished patching everything up and gave it a chance to dry, this is what I was left with. Now, I can finally start building the damn thing. First, I cut off the sides and made all the pieces the width that I want the chairs to be. I didn't have any particular measurements in mind for the width, if I'm being perfectly honest. I just kind of eyeballed what I thought would look good. I don't recommend this, always measure your stuff, but for me it was the height that's important, so that's the measurement that I made sure to stick with. Now this is where precision became important. I wanted to cut the top and bottom edges of the pieces that will serve as legs at a 5 degree angle. Here I used a digital angle gauge for the measurement, so that I can get it right down to the decimals. I then measured out how much I needed to cut off on each side, I set up the stopper on the crosscut sled, and cut the four pieces that are going to serve as legs. I always make sure to run each piece that I'm cutting through before adjusting the setup for the next cut. This way, I don't have to reset each time and deal with the inconsistencies that will come with that. Thank you. 
This was the goal. I wanted the legs to go out at a slight angle rather than just going straight down because this is a way sturdier design. If there wasn't an angle and someone were to sit on the edge of the chair, it would tip over and we really don't want that. This way you don't have to worry about falling off if you're not sitting in the exact center. The next thing that I had to do was make the slits in the side so that I can attach the support pieces to the legs and the base of the seat. Now this is where things get a little tricky. I had to make sure that I keep the exact angle so that everything is nice and parallel. I marked the angle of the legs and then used that as a reference to make sure that the crosscut sled was angled perfectly. Now the table does have a way of measuring this angle, but if you use different tools, you're going to get slightly different measurements each time. So it's really best to try and be consistent with the tool that you're using for measurements. And in this case, I made sure to double check my work. For this setup, I made sure that the blade was the same height as the thickness of the wood. And then I set up the fence so that the distance from it and the blade was how wide I wanted the support to be. If this doesn't make a lot of sense now, then don't worry about it. I promise it will once you see it. Then I ran the wood through it repeatedly, moving it a bit each time so that I can cut these notches in it. I then used a similar process by setting up the stopper on the sled and the fence so that I can't accidentally push the wood further than I need it to go. Then I started with the wood against the stopper and then slowly cut notches until the wood hit the fence. That's how I knew I got the exact cut that I wanted. I did this to all four pieces on each side, again making sure not to readjust anything until I made all the identical cuts on all of the parts first. Now we can chisel away the remaining bits. This was actually a lot easier than I expected. I didn't even need to use the mallet. They came right off and left a pretty clean cut. And this is how everything is supposed to fit. These wooden strips were made out of the remaining shelves that I'm not using for the seats, which is why the blade was raised to equal the thickness of the wood. So now when I insert this strip, it is flush with the legs. Everything seems to fit how it's supposed to, so now I can trim down the supports. I used my trusty circular saw for this. I measured everything out and then chop chop. Just look at this all fit together. Doesn't it make you happy? All right, I think it's ready to get screwed in. I know I said I plan on using the wood screws that I salvaged from the shelves, but I'll double it up and also use glue. That way everything is extra safe. I also use this countersink bit to pre-drill the holes because I didn't want the screws to stick out and cause any snagging. Then I went through and I pre-drilled the holes, I added the glue, and then I screwed everything in. And of course, I did this to both chairs, to both sides. After the glue dried, I scraped off the excess, I went through with my putty one more time and I filled in any gaps that were left just so everything is nice and smooth for the paint. And yes, I decided to paint. I know, 
Shame on me. And now, this is how it looks so far. Notice that the tops aren't attached yet. There's a reason for this, and you'll see what it is in a second. But first, I want to explain my logic behind something, because the devil really is in the details. In case you were wondering why I bothered cutting out these notches for the supports when I could have just used those same pieces and instead put them on the inside, glued them, and then screwed them in from the side, that's a very good question. Let me explain. When you sit on top of the chair, the force is being applied down, which means that the legs are going to be pushed out. So the first reason is the screws. If the screw was now coming in from the sides, the teeth of the screw would be the main thing that would resist the force that is preventing the legs from being pushed out. Compare that to the screw being where it is now, where the outward force has to resist the entire length of the screw if it wants to push the legs out. That's a lot more work it would require for the legs to break. Reason number two is the glue. Had I glued it from the inside, I would be gluing end grain to long grain. And this is a no-no. You never want to glue end grain. It will not hold. The way I have it now, I have this long grain glued to this long grain. So the glue in this case is providing an extremely secure hold. So I went with this option because both the screws and the glue are way more secure. These are the details they can make or literally break your build. Okay. Now that I have the structure built, I can start getting creative with the appearance. I asked my shop mate to help me use her laser and engrave a design on both of the seats. And then when that finished, I ran each piece through the router so that the edges aren't too sharp and are more comfortable to sit on. This is what they look like. Now it's time to paint. I used painter's tape to cover up the sections that I plan on painting a different color, and then I went over everything that's exposed with this red stain, which is the same one I used for the accent color in my fireplace, for those of you that remember. I felt like this would make the pieces look like they're complementing each other. When I was done and gave it a bit of a chance to dry, I took off the tape, and this is how it looks. I was really sad that I had to paint over the exposed wood parts, because I love how this looks. But sadly, I don't think it would work if I left this exposed and had the lower half painted. So sadly, I had to paint over the wood part. Now, while the top coat dried, I painted the bottom halves of the chairs. And then I realized that I'm not as happy with the design as I hoped I would be. So I started messing around with it a bit more. Once the paint dried, I ran the sides through the router again. I wanted to smooth over the edges and give the chairs a slightly softer feel, but also add the red stain down the lower half. That way the two halves don't look so disjointed. This fixed some of the issues that I had with the appearance, but there's still something missing. I decided to stop messing with them for now and not risk ruining everything. So I just glued them together, added some felt to the bottom so they don't scratch up my floor, and I took them home. I'm really trying to learn how to look at my work objectively and not be too critical of everything that I make. So I will say that I do like the technical execution of everything. I think they're really solid as far as chairs go, and they do feel really sturdy. Like when I sit down on them, there's no creaking or settling, and I know they're going to hold for a really long time. I also really like the dimensions because I feel like they're wide enough to be useful, but when I push them under the counter, they're completely out of the way, which is something I was going for because I didn't want to have to walk around them when I'm not using them because I don't really have that much space at home. What I don't like about them is purely aesthetic, and I honestly don't even know why. I just think that they could look nicer. Maybe if I added more rounded edges? I don't know, it could be that they just look too sharp and boxy? But while I was looking online for ideas that I could use to fix the chairs, I came across this on Wayfair. They look pretty similar to what I made, but cost $130 on sale. And mine were free, made from scraps. So I definitely feel a little better about what I made here, but still not great. 
I'm really curious to know what other people think. Should I revisit the design a bit later and see if I could make them look nicer? Or should I just leave them alone and not mess with them and leave them as they are? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'm legitimately curious here. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.